Our session right now is Qigong and Tai Chi, Ancient Wisdom for Cultivating Energy and Sound Sleep. It will conclude at 1125, giving everyone a chance to stretch before continuing on to your next session of your Tikkun adventure. I'm very excited to introduce tonight's presenter. Master Yang Yang, PhD, is a renowned Tai Chi and Qigong master, educator, and researcher who collaborates with scientists at major medical institu institutions to study the benefits of Tai Chi and Qigong. The founder, director of the Center for Tai Chi and Qigong Studies, Dr. Yang, authored the acclaimed book, Tai Chi Chuang, The Art of Nature, Nurturing the Science of Power. He has distilled these ancient arts into an accessible, effective, and evidence-based program available online at wa-chi.com. Dr. Anna C. Krager is a physician joining us this evening, scientist and the chief of sleep neurology at Wheel Cornell Medicine and New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. She is a professor of medicine, neurology, and genetic medicine with research funded by the NIH and National Science Foundation. Dr. Krieger has been featured as the top doctor in the US News and World Report Consumer Research Council of America, Castle Connolly, New York Magazine, and the New York Times. And thank you so much all for joining us tonight. And without further ado, I pass it off to them. Okay, everyone. So uh, just let you know the structure of tonight, uh, because it's about sleep. And then we will spend the first 50, um, 45 minutes on how to cultivate relaxation and also balance the energy to develop sleep. And then also some of you are going to stay whole night to study. And so we will have the last five to 10 minutes do agility practice to boost your energy so you can stay all night to study. Okay, now let me, and also today's class is a introduction class for a four week series. We will start on June 2nd, hosted by JCC to work on how to use Tai Chi Qigong to cultivate energy and uh, sound sleep. So you can join us then if you like. Okay, now let's do our first um, Qigong exercise called cloud hands. So to cultivate relaxation. Ready there? Let's do a mirror, mirror uh, image. You can bring your left arm up to shoulder height. Ready? For one, you go down. And then two. Rotate and then bring to your left and then finish. Again, let's get the pattern first. One, just a chop. Two, three, four, five. Now, everybody smile, please. One, think you are the best. Wherever you are, you are the best practitioner of Tai Chi and Qigong. Relax. And let it go. Now, let's try to use deep and relaxed breathing to cultivate relaxation. And then go up. Now here, breathe out, breathe in, breathe in, and breathe out, and breathe in. Now breathe out, breathe in, breathe in, and then breathe out, and then let it go. Now let's try your right side. Palm facing down. Ready? Now number one, go down. Let's get the pattern. Number two, palm up and then rotate and then go back to your right side. And then rotate. Number one, go down. Number two, up, rotate and then Bring back to your right and then finish. Now breathing wise, breathe out, 
breathe in, continue to breathe in and then breathe out. And breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, continue to breathe in, breathe out. Let it go, breathe in and then breathe out. Breathe in, breathe in and then breathe out. Now, I'm going to turn around so we face the same direction to practice. Just try another couple of times. When we do this one, how to cultivate the relaxation, think about we are moving water. And then you are every point on the skin, we are moving water. Okay, let's try that. Now bring your right arm to the shoulder height. Ready? Number one, go down. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five. Think about how we use minimum effort to move the water up. Rotate, open to the right, and finish. One more, please. Go down, moving the water. Minimum effort, and then rotate. Open to the right, and finish. Now we rest the right arm, bring the left arm up, palm facing down. Ready? Number one, we go down and up, rotate, and then back to the left. Smile, everyone. Think whatever you do is the best. Down and up, rotate, are turning to the right, and then finish. One more time, move the water down up to shoulder height, rotate, and turn the body, move the water to the left, and finish. Wonderful. Let's do another moving Qigong exercise, washing organs, called breathe in, taking fresh energy in, and then breathe out. Again, breathe in, and breathe out. Go down and then up, breathe in, and breathe out. Great. Now let's do a practice. It is called Million Dollar Secret from Chinese martial art and healing art standing meditation. This practice probably does not make sense at the very beginning. Once you try this, you will experience the power for relaxation and for sleep. So let me help you to set up. We stand uh, about shoulder width apart. Bend your knees slightly. And then soften the hip joints. Raise your arms to chest high. Let your body grow two inches taller and a smile. Now let's imagine we are standing in water and the water is moving us slowly and randomly. Just allow the water to move our body. So you might ask what this has to do with sleep. So when we are standing in silence, we are enhancing our awareness. We all carry a lot of tension in our body. We just don't know it. So the tension affect our sleep and also causing pain. Now check your shoulders. 
I saw some of you are standing like this, right? That's the tension I'm talking about. Drop the tension, drop the shoulders. And then you can lower your arms a little bit. If you want, you can close your eyes to experience where is the tension. I find the tension in my lower back. Then I let it go. Again, imagine we are moving in water. So the water is moving our body randomly and slowly. Now let's drop the arms and pointing the finger into the ground. We are developing rooting. Now I find a tension in my thighs and I let it go. Now Let's do another variation of the posture, reaching your arms to the ceiling. Imagine we are two inches taller. So in the Chinese martial art and the healing art, it is said, if we can make our body one inch longer, our strength will be doubled. Actually, from a science, we understand we generate more room, more space for the blood, for the oxygen to be delivered to our tissues and the nerves. So we have less chance to have a pain. Of course, pain is another factor affect us sleep. Now let's go down, drop the arm. And again, let's do the washing organs. Bring up and drop, drop the arms. Again, back to the chest height. So again, we enhance the awareness, find the tension in our body. Then we remove the tension. That's one of the mechanisms to help us sleep better. Now let's do the closing. Again, breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Now, what we just did is using standing meditation to identify tension, then relieve the tension to help us sleep better. Okay, now let's do our next practice which is deep and relaxed breathing. Yeah, just to follow me. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, again, we are moving water. And breathe out. Breathe in and out. Now I'm gonna to turn to my side so you can have the side view, we also use this one to practice our posture. So what you don't want is, and they're going down like this. And you wanna maintain a very, very beautiful posture. Up and down and breathe in 
and out. It is also a wonderful exercise to open our shoulder joints. We don't use our shoulder as much as we should in our daily activity. So you use this one gently open the shoulders and we call that using the energy to lubricate joints. Then if you have a shoulder pain already, you can modify, have a little bit of smaller move. In Chinese medicine and healing art, we call it no pain, more gain. Yes. Up. Anytime modify the movement, I'm teaching. Again, up and down. Again, deep breath in and out. We give a count. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. We can change this to a moderate cardio practice. We are going to save the cardio part to the last five, 10 minutes, okay? So, but let's just the con get the concept up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. A uh, one, two, three, a uh, one, two, three, a uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we are going to do some footwork. I'm gonna turn around also three counts, okay? So let's do this one. Put the right foot in front. Ready? Uh, one, two, three. And one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Three, relax your body. One, two, three. Make your body two years younger. Yeah, uh, one, two, three. Relax your body. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Let's add the arm in. One, two, three. We just did the arm. One, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Three, uh, one, two, three. Okay, actually, this is a martial art drill, conditioning drill. Let me show you this part and then the cardio part. You just get the idea. We're gonna practice this part at the end. Okay, just so let me show you so you get the idea there. And then we're going to jump. And then you want to jump like a tiger, but not like a cow, okay? So that's the Chinese master will tell you that. So now we're going to invite Dr. Krieger to give a lecture, and then we will do a sitting meditation to work on the mind, then lying down meditation to cultivate deeper relaxation. Thank you, and I will see you very soon. Now, here is Dr. Krieger. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Master Young, again, for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to teach with you. And I think we can all learn and benefit so much from Tai Chi and from all those lessons. So we're just going to briefly discuss a few items about sleep. So one important aspect for us to remember is that we often look into our physical health in terms of training, nutrition, and rest, but not necessarily apply the same concepts to the brain. So we need to remember that the brain is to undergo training, which is what we're doing tonight, learning and, and praying and reading. We need to have adequate nutrition and we also need adequate rest. And the, the rest also comes basically from sleep. Meditation can also serve a purpose towards that. So three elements are critical for adequate sleep. 
proper timing, which means keeping on a good schedule for your sleep, watching to see that you have enough duration allocated for your sleep cycle, and make sure that your sleep quality is also adequate, that you don't have underlying sleep problems or disruptions in your sleep, because there are a lot of sleep disorders that are quite prevalent. COVID, of course, has had a major toll in our sleep, and we know the effects of lockdown affect our mental health, our physical health, the environment around us. So it's amazing to see all of you taking the opportunity to understand more about your sleep and your health and try to learn techniques like Tai Chi that can really be very beneficial to our sleep. In addition to this, we have to see that there are many sleep problems that are present in the population. Insomnia is highly prevalent, and we see about a quarter of the population, particularly in metropolitan busy areas, suffering from insomnia. Women are a little more so than men. And sleep apnea being another very prevalent sleep problem, we have to see that a lot of men develop sleep apnea, and that is more often seen as we get older. But women also can suffer from sleep apnea predominantly after menopause. And other sleep disturbances like restless legs or movement disorders can also be present as well. So speaking a little bit about insomnia, it's important for us to realize there are different types of difficulty sleeping related to insomnia. It could be a difficulty falling asleep. Insomnia could be part of having difficulty staying asleep or an early morning awakening, which means people go to sleep and they reasonably sleep well, but they wake up too early. So those are the three main components of insomnia. And a fourth type is the really un having an unrefreshing sleep, which means people would normally sleep and not really perceive that it was a sleep problem, but just feel tired and lack the refreshness that they would normally get from sleep. In order to solve that, we need to look for underlying causes and stress, worries, and anxiety is always a huge problem for all of us. So this is, again, another opportunity for us to learn techniques to, to decompress a little bit and to avoid all of the stress to carry over during the night. Inadequate bedtime habits or inadequate routine can also be a problem. Tonight is an exception, but normally we shouldn't be on electronics late at night. Uh, we need to make sure that we keep a good routine and we don't have a bedtime that is misaligned, which means one night to sleep from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. and another night to sleep from 2 a.m. to 9 a.m. So we need to make sure that we have a schedule that is really well organized. We need to prevent a lot of bright light exposure. And that's why maybe you might see me on and off putting my blue light blocking glasses because I'm in front of my computer screen tonight. Warm bedroom temperature sometimes can be a problem that may keep people from sleeping well at night. A lot of noise coming through. For all of us that are in New York City, we're well acquainted to outside noise intruding our sleep in the sleep disorders that we spoke about. So in order for us to sleep better, we need to also keep in mind that what we do during the day affects our sleep. So exposure to alcohol, nicotine, caffeine, they are always stimulants, so they can really affect how we sleep. We also need to remember not to worry and deal with stressing content at night. And often people sometimes say, well, they have a stressful conversation either with their partner, spouse, or family members at night that shouldn't be the best time for us to discuss problems because then when we go to sleep, our mind is racing and try to solve those issues. We also need to pay attention to the environment, you know, taking care of the temperature, make sure there is low light and low noise as much as possible. And we need to add time physical activity during the day. The time we spend upright and exercising can really improve our sleep and can help offset insomnia from all perspectives, for people that have difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep or waking up too early, all of that can definitely be improved if we have a better routine during the daytime. I often also recommend having, for the busy minders out there, have a time to worry. Allocate that during the daytime. So set aside 15 minutes, let's say after lunch, where you can open up your journal and just go through your worries. Because if we don't decompress somewhere in the middle of the day, all of that stress will really surface at night when we're trying to fall asleep. And meditation and relaxation strategies, as we're learning today with Master Young, can be super helpful and really help us fall asleep. 
Sometimes patients will tell me, oh, my difficulty is not falling asleep. So why should I meditate or relax before going to sleep if my difficulty is just staying asleep? Sometimes we forget that the environment that we fall asleep in mentally and physically will affect the quality of our sleep. So all forms of insomnia can benefit from what you're learning today. So thank you so much and back to Master Young again. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so Dr. Quaker just mentioned the meditation. Now let's work on the mind to cultivate true happiness, resilience, and tranquility to help us sleep better. I am told that one of the commandments for Jewish people is known as Tikam Olam, or the commandment to heal the world. Many of us have the desire to make the world a better place but feel that as one person, we do not have the ability to make a difference. In Chinese culture, we also have a mandate to make the world a better place. We also know that we cannot change the world. So we try to change a small piece of it whatever we can make the change. I am told that the, uh, the commandment to heal the world can also be interpreted the same way. Many of us cannot heal everything, but all of us can make some changes in the world where I will live. Making hard decisions, sometimes very hard decisions, is a necessary part of making those small changes. Back in 1977, my family and I made one of the most difficult decisions. Actually, in 1976, several major things happened in Chinese history and in my family. Chairman Mao died. Deng Xiaoping came to power. One of his reforms was to restore the college system. Taking the national college exam try to make a place in a university was the only chance for people to change and improve their lives. But it wasn't clear if kids from families with a punished political background would be allowed to take the national exam. My family fell into this category. My uncle was a political prisoner. Even though my uncle's sentence had come to an end at that time, he would have to remain in prison if nobody would take him in. Such decision was weighty. Even his daughter decided not even to meet with him Following this, my father gathered our family to consider whether or not we can bring him 
to live with us. My mother was opposed due to the risk that the children will not be able to take the national exam and lose all the possibility of higher education. My father responded that in his heart, he loved his children as much as she did. Also in his heart, he felt it was not right to leave his brother in the prison. My uncle was captured and tortured since 1947 and had been kept in prison for 27 years. He should be brought home to live with us. Because of the disagreement between two of them, my father said, the children should make the decision what was right or wrong at that time in that situation. Three of us debated. Finally, my siblings and I decided to bring my uncle to live with us. Of course, we were all anxious about the future. Nobody knew what would happen. Happily, the government allowed us to take the national exam. What I learned from this and from Chinese philosophy was that we are all born with kindness and know intuitively what is right or wrong. When our choices and actions are aligned with our innate kindness, we are on the right path. Now, let's meditate on this story and see if you can relate this truth to your decision making. Now I'm going to ring the bell and guide us to enter silence. If you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes.
And on this holiday, where Jewish people celebrate the giving of the Torah, let's remind ourselves one of the abiding truth from Chinese philosophy and from the Jewish commandments. That we are all born with kindness, and with the ability to make the world a better place, one small piece at a time. Part of this comes from the innate kindness, and this innate kindness. Tells us what is right and what is wrong. Chinese philosophy calls this intuitive knowledge, and this states that if we align our choices and actions along with this. A, a intuitive knowledge. If we can use this intuitive knowledge to guide our decision making, it will bring true happiness, resilience, and tranquility in the face of adversity. Now let's do our finishing movements: washing organs, raise our arms up, breathe in, and breathe out. Breathe in. One more time. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's rotate our energy center, which is our abdominal area. Then let's reverse the circles. One, two. Now let's put our hands on our heart and have a moment of gratitude. Great. Now in our June session. Every class will pick up one meditation theme to work on the mind to cultivate tranquility and help us sleep better. Now let's do a short lying down meditation to cultivate deeper relaxation. Before we lay down on our mat, I want to explain to you very briefly. We did the cloud hand, right? Do this one, and then now we're going to put one arm on the floor, and then do another arm like exactly the same thing, and rotate, and open, 
and then down, down to the other side. I'm just showing you what we're gonna do on the floor. And then now let's give it a try. Very short and due to the time constraint, just get the concept. Okay, now let's put the yoga mat on the floor. So I'm going to lay down uh, head that direction. So I'm going to show our uh, my right arm. Let's do the same thing. So I'm going to lay down there, right? I'm going to do like uh, we're doing the cloud hand this way and then rotate and then open. Why don't you watch me just one time? Okay, so let me try this. So I'm putting both arms on the floor. And then number one, as we did in the standing position. Number two. And then number three, rotate. And then number four, open. And put it down. Okay, let's give it a try. Yeah, I will wait for you. Go ahead, take your time, lay down there. Ready? Take your time, yeah. First, just a drop, drop your arms. You can put your knees up and stand on your feet. Just sink your whole body deeply into the ground. And drop every single bone and the muscle sink into the ground. And then we can turn the body to our left and drop the knees, the legs to the left. Now let's do our cloud hand as lazy as possible. One, down, the hip and the two bring the hand to meet our left hand then rotate our right arm now the palm is facing up and then open the arm bring the right arm up and drop the arm to the floor now again Go down, drop the right arm down to the left. And continue move up to meet the left hand. Then rotate the right arm. Now the right arm palm is facing up. And then open, bring the right arm up like we are moving water. And again, number one, bring our right arm to our right hip. And then bring the right arm, continue to meet our left hand. You can rest there a little bit and sink the energy deeply into the ground. Now let's go as lazy as you can be. Open the arms and bring up and drop it. One more time, just experience what that means as lazy as possible, as relaxed as possible.
Then we rotate our right arm, palm facing up now. And then open again, the right arm, bring it up. And drop. Now you can just stay there and enjoy the relaxation. Okay, now it was a very short practice, just have a taste. Uh, but I also want to let you know, this is a part of the Chinese martial art training. It's counterintuitive because it will help sleep and also used to prevent pain and injury. Very simple, if you have pain, you cannot defend yourself. Just to give you some background there. Okay, now we are ready to get up and do a few energetic agility training, we call that. Okay, to boost our energy so you can stay up all night to study. So let's review the martial art drill. It's called the warrior's jump. So first, let me face you, review the arms, and then I will turn around, we do the footwork, and then we jump. But when you jump, please don't go beyond your limit. Again, remember, no pain, more gain. Okay, let's do it. First, arms only. Deep breathing, we use deep breathing to cultivate relaxation in motion to help us sleep better. A one, two, three. 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 I'm gonna turn around, only footwork. Ready? A one, Two, three, uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now with the arm, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. Make your body two years younger. Just have the feeling, oh, I can, do the motion like two years ago. Yes, good. Make it so light. Now it's 11.30 almost. I want to jump light so my neighbor will not complain. Yes. Now let's get three years younger. Can we add five years younger? And then we cool down. Again, still imagine our body is two years younger. So we are working on agility. So I'm gonna turn around. So we are going to, we are, what we're doing is a very short uh, version of it in a martial art, your training, you're gonna jump longer. It's conditioning training. And cardio movement helps sleep. So, but, Tonight, we're doing a very short version of that. Actually, for those of our friends who are going to stay whole night study, after you sit there one hour, you can get up, use this one to boost your energy. And finish.
Now let's do a washing organs to bring our energy down to our energy center to close the practice. Again, breathe in, up, and down. Imagine we are gathering energy from nature, cleanse our body, and bring the energy down to our energy center. Now let's rotate the energy a few times. Reverse the circle. And I'm very grateful to have the chance to work with you. Thank you. Now we open to questions to Dr. Krieger and uh, Enemy. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Again, we're going to run this course four evenings, four Wednesday evenings from 8.30 to 9.30 in the evening. They, we are teaching the evening version, how to prepare for sound sleep. And uh, so if you have interest, welcome, join us. And Dr. Krieger and me, we will teach these four evening sessions. Any questions? No, you either already fall asleep or you're getting ready for the next study. Um, how do you sign up for the class? Um, I, have, well, I did not I, hear the question. I've just added the, the link to register for your class in the chat. So you should be able to see that. Give me one yeah. second. There you go. Uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, the exercise that you just did on the floor from yes. the right hand over to the left side, would you not also do it the opposite, the left over to the right? Sure. Yes, exactly. Because of the time constraint, we only do one side. Okay. I and just then practice. when you practice by yourself, of course, you do the other side. And also let you know in a four session, every class, in a, in a June session, four classes, each class we will introduce a different lying down. It is called a lying down meditation used for help sleep and injury prevention. Yes, good question. Next. There's one in the chat. I think this might be for Dr. Krieger. What is the best time of day to sleep? Usually at night. So that's how sleep is regulated by cells that actually are neurons that sit right in the back of our eyes and communicate with the deeper parts of the brain that are called the cell that are pacemakers for a sleep cycle. So sleep is best aligned with the dark hours of the day and keeping them regular. Everybody has a biological timing. Some people have a preference to going to bed earlier, meaning 7 or 8 p.m., let's say, and waking up very early. Others have a natural biological preference to staying up a little bit later, going to bed around midnight or 1, let's say, and sleeping in a little bit. As long as it is regular, that's the most important aspect in making sure that the environment is not what is driving this. A lot of people are going to bed very late because of the use of electronics. So that's why I highlighted, you know, always using some kind of shield if you have to use electronics at night to avoid that shift in your biological cycle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all for having us. This was really delightful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Krieger. Thank you, Joelle. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you all yeah. so much. We look nice to everyone. Meet everyone. Have a great night, everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.